Hello, hello, hello. Can I have your attention, please? Can I have your attention, please? Someone need to move their car. It's a gray Honda Civic. Hold on, the license plate number is uh, V Z E 3895. Please move your car. I need, I need access to my parking on the grass, please. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Lord. We have come to celebrate a life on today. And so we would ask that you would stand for the call to worship as well as the words of assurance. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For even on a day like today, the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm shall destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may be seated for the invocation. Let us pray. All wise and gracious God, We come this morning giving your name all honor and praise. We come this morning, God, saying that it was you who woke us up. It was you who started us on our way. It was you who decided that on this day we would be in this place for this purpose. And so, God, we are operating in faith now, believing that everything that you do is perfect. We're operating in trust, God, believing that you have all things in your hands. We're operating in your love, God, knowing that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. So God, even though we are now walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we know, God, that you are with us. We know that your goodness and your mercy, they are with us. And we pray, God, that as we go through this worship experience, that yokes will be broken that sadness will be replaced by joy, that you will touch this family and all that have been gathered here so that we might know that when we have run our course and when our course is done, that there is a crown laid up for us. And so God, we ask you to inhabit the praises of your people today. 
Have your way in the preached word. Have your way in the scriptures. Have your way in the reflections. In everything that is done, God, we invite you in so that you might be honored and Sister Debbie might be lifted up. So God, this is our prayer of invocation and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. We would invite you now to join us in our hymn of praise. Hold to God's unchanging hands. We would invite you to stand. <laughs>
may be seated. Yes, in the days and weeks to come, we pray that the Ball family and others will continue to hold to God's unchanging hands. Even when there's nobody visiting anymore, no one calling anymore, no one texting anymore, God will always be there. Just keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. At this time, we would invite the presiding elder of the Harrisburg District, the Reverend Dr. Myrtle Bowen, to lead us in our Old Testament reading. Uh, Reverend Dr. Tina Nelson, associate minister here at Lomax, will lead us in our New Testament reading. Reverend Alice Walker Johnson, the pastor of Clinton AME Zion Church, and um, one who has a very close relationship with the Lomax Church, uh, will bring us our prayer of comfort. And while they are coming, we want to acknowledge uh, the Reverend Sam Whitaker, past pastor of Lomax AME Zion Church, who was here with us. You are certainly welcome to join us in the pulpit if you would like to, amen. So we will ask now that presiding elder Bowen would come at this time. Amen. Amen. As we continue to hold to his hand, we'd like to share with you a passage of scripture that is familiar. And I believe while there are many versions of the 23rd Psalm, mm -hmm. I believe our beloved Debbie would appreciate this one most. This one is going to be taken from the Message Bible. Yeah. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. My Lord. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. My Lord. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head and my cup brimmed with blessings. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. This part I'm certain she appreciates, and you will too. I am back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. I am back home with my God for the rest of my life. One more time for the Holy Spirit. I am back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Good morning, family. Our New Testament scripture lesson this morning is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, and I will be reading verses 1 through 6 from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Though written long after Debbie Baugh came into the world, fairly recently in fact, but is a testimony that whenever I hear it, I think of her. And the song says very simply, I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away, Lord, so you can use me. There is seated in this hallowed place this morning those who know that the life that we've come to celebrate is a life that was one of service, one of sacrifice, one of loving kindness and care. From the balcony to the pulpit, from the ceiling to the floor, certainly from this hallowed space all the way to the back door, there are those who can testify that indeed we celebrate a life of a giver. Yes. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've come this morning just to say thank you. We've come, oh God, to lift up your name, to declare that our God still reigns, that you are God in the midst of our heartbreak and our tears. You are still God and you are still good. God, we come to thank you for the gift that you gave to us. A gift, oh God, that you gave at Calvary. One who is the true giver. His name is Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for his suffering and for his sacrifice. Thank you for his love and for his leadership. Thank you for the legacy that he left. And thank you, oh God, that when he called disciples and said, follow me, that our sister, Debbie Blige and Ball, heard the call. And God willingly said, I will take up my cross daily and I will follow you. God, we thank you that she declared the world behind her and the cross before her. Every day, God, it was no turning back, no turning back. God, we've come to say thank you for sending such a soldier into, oh God, the kingdom. Thank you, oh God, that we can testify to a life well lived. God, the truth of the matter is we have no question, even as it was declared in the scripture, that she's back home with you. So God, this morning we've come to beg God at your grace, to beg your comfort and your care. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would dispatch ministering angels, oh God. That God, late in the midnight hour, early, oh God, in the morning before dawn, in the middle of the day, oh God, that those angels would be on assignment. That Tommy, oh God, and Jay, that Kimmy, oh God, that a daughter in love, that a grandson, oh God, that a son in love to be, that family and extended family, that friends, oh God, from near and far might, oh God, be comforted. God, we speak your peace right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that even as memories come like a flood, that God, we might not only shed tears of sadness, but God, that joy might break forth and God, that laughter might prevail. For surely, oh God, you have given us precious memories. Would you, God, even right now, sit with this family by the power of the Holy Spirit? Would you, God, right now, let your grace just be deposited, God, all over this sanctuary? Would you, oh God, be in the midst of a deaconess board? Would you, oh God, visit in the children's ministry where Debbie's life, oh God, was lived with such excellence? Would you, oh God, travel across these youth and young adults who God learned how to act because Aunt Debbie dared to speak into their lives? Would you, oh God, help us, those of us, God, who have now children and our children have children. Help us, oh God. Help us, God, in the moments when we miss the counsel and the wisdom. 
In the moments, God, when we want to pick up the phone and ask for the opinion, help us, oh God, to fill that empty space with your wisdom, with your love and your grace. Would you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, help us, oh God, to see now, oh God, one who is at rest with you. Not God as absent only from the body, but present with the Lord. Help us, oh God, to so live our lives that we might declare, oh God, I give myself away. I give God while I can give myself away. I give myself away, oh God, so you can use me. God, we thank you even right now for your comfort and your care. Thank you, God, for your peace and your love. Thank you, oh God, for the breaking of joy even in this place. Thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to celebrate a life. Thank you, God, for the promise that you, God, made that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, God, we place even right now this family, these friends, these adopted children, these, oh God, deaconess. We place, God, even this church, God, for which Debbie, oh God, spent so much time. This church, God, where she loved so hard and serve so well. We place, God, ourselves in your hands that you might, oh God, use us until that time, oh God, then we've come to meet you and then, God, to rejoin our sister. It is in the strong, the mighty, the matchless, the everlasting, the all-knowing, and the ever-showing name of Jesus, we pray. We do it with thanksgiving. Amen. I have been knowing Deb for over 50 years. I knew her before Tommy did. And <laughs> we, our children grew up together and uh, to know Deb was to love her. She had a sense of humor that was second to none. But in spite of it all, we knew, I knew, she knew where her soul was anchored and that's in the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he leads me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see If the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though the storms Keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within 
is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he leads me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't cease and if the winds keep on blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in the Lord oh I realize that sometimes in this life we're gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce but in the words of God I, I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the time but if the storms the storms don't cease and just in case the winds keep on blowing blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in the Lord oh I realize that sometimes in this life we're gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce but in the words of God, I've, I've got an anchor that keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the tides. But if the storms, the storms don't cease, and just in case, the winds they keep blowing blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in the low's been anchored my soul's been anchored my soul's been anchored my soul's been anchored my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored. The billows may roll, the breakers may dash, I cannot sway, cause he holds me fast. So dark the days, the clouds in the sky, that's alright because my Jesus is not. And my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul has been anchored in the
Isn't it good to come to a funeral where you don't have to wonder whether or not the person's soul has been anchored? We, we know what we know, amen? And so we can celebrate that Sister Debbie's soul was anchored in the Lord. And our Lord will not fail us, even in the time of transition. And that's a promise. At this time, we would invite Sister Brenda Cox to come with our acknowledgments. Good morning. Good morning. The Barr family would have you to know that they are deeply appreciative of each and every expression of sympathy that has been extended to them during their hour of bereavement. There have been, Tommy has told me this morning, numerous cards. I won't acknowledge them this, I won't read any this morning, but they will be uh, shared with you. Each, each card will be acknowledged individually in the days to come. At this point, I'm going to share with you letters from our church to the Bob family. The first one reads, to the family of the late deaconess Deb Deborah Barr. Next Gen, the youth department of the Lomax AME Zion Church offers our deepest condolences to you on the loss of your loved one, Mrs. Debbie Barr, AKA Aunt Debbie. We want to share some of our memories of Aunt Debbie. Dewan Green says, when I think of Aunt Debbie, I think of tough love, confidence, and someone who was not sensitive. <laughs> Jordan Parham says, I remember how Aunt Debbie helped me when I had to read the announcements. She provided me confidence to go further. I also remember the pizzas we would have during ch children's church. Tyrus Pincham shares, Aunt Debbie was more than just a children's choir director. She was a special woman. She was my birthday twin. We had the same birth date. She was a woman of integrity and best believe she did not play. She meant what she said and said what she meant. So hard to see her go, but she's in a better place. Rest in paradise. Dorian Green says, I remember Aunt Debbie taking us downstairs for Children's Church. Each time we would do something different, but always had pizza. I remember her tough love. She made sure she spoke to everyone. She was my first Children's Church teacher. She was strict on learning and understanding the stories of the Bible. While we would miss her directing the choir, conducting the Children's Church, and passing out pizza, we will forever cherish the memories of her loving, encouraging, and supporting us. We will continue to remember the wonderful memories and times we spent with her. We will continue to keep you all in our prayers. Yours in Christ, alumni of Lomax Children's Church and choir members, Next Gen Youth Department of the Lomax AME Zion Church. To the family of the late Deaconess Deborah Barr, the Deaconess Board of the Lomax AME Zion Church offers its deepest condolences to you on the loss of your loved one and our beloved Deaconess Emeritus Deborah Barr. Please know our thoughts and prayers are with you during this most difficult time. Deaconess Barr was a very faithful and active member here at Lomax and a dedicated deaconess. She was consecrated as a deaconess under the pastorship of Reverend Gary, Dr. Gary W. Burns. On March 26, 2023, she was honored as Deaconess Emeritus. While we will miss her service to the Deaconess Board, we will forever value the memories of her positive, willingness, loving, encouraging, and supporting demeanor. We are confident Deacon Emeritus Barr is now with that, quote, great cloud of witnesses, unquote. She will be greatly missed by all who had the pleasure of working with her on the Deaconess Board and other ministries. It is our prayer 
that these memories of Deaconess Emeritus Barr and the assurance she is now resting with our Lord will bring you much strength, peace, and comfort. As you face tomorrow without her presence, please know Deacon Emeritus Barr is probably saying, as the Apostle Paul said to the church at Corinth, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Please continue to cherish the wonderful memories and times you spent with her. We will continue to pray for your peace and comfort. Know that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. If the Deaconess Board can be of assistance to you in any way, please do not hesitate to call upon us. May God forever keep you in his care. Yours in Christ, Denise A. Pencham, President, Deaconess Board, Lomax AME Zion Church. And our church uh, paper reads, to the family of the late Deborah Ann Blygden Barr. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Revelation 21.1. It was with great sadness that the members of the Lomax African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church received the news of the passing of our longtime dedicated member, Deborah Barr. Debbie and Tommy joined our congregation in 1982 after relocating to the Arlington area from Charlotte, North Carolina. They were blessed with two children, Jason and Kimberly, who were also active in church activities from their childhood and throughout their time at Lomax. Debbie and Tommy immediately became invaluable members in our midst. Debbie was a staunch teacher and leader of our children and youth, working as a Sunday school teacher, was the promised leader, assistant to the children's choir, and general mentor. Debbie was frequently asked to serve as the mistress of ceremonies for various programs hosted by church organizations because of her poised and adaptable demeanor. She served as a dedicated member of the Deaconess Board for many years. She was also act an active member of the Sanctuary Choir as well as the Lomax Ensemble, often leading solos with her beautiful voice. She was known to visit the sick and shut in and their families, offering whatever support she could until her health began to fail. We are thankful for the precious memories of Debbie's outgoing personality and her willingness to be of help and assistance in the various programs of the church through the years. As you adjust to the days ahead without the physical presence of your loved one, please know that you will continually be in our thoughts and prayers. God tells us in Matthew 5, 4, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, unquote. And the hymnist tells us, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. We pray you are able to take solace in knowing that Debbie is now in her well-earned place with our Lord, which Jesus prepared for her. Please know that your church family stands ready to be of assistance to you in whatever you need may be. We sincerely wish you peace as you remember all the good times you shared with your wife and mother. Done by the order of the Lomax African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Reverend Dr. Adrian V. Nelson, pastor. Okay, and I will leave you with a poem that we feel epitomizes uh, Debbie's life. The title is A Life Well Lived, Author is Unknown. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. It's filled with moments, sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared and laughter through the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful acknowledgments. And we'll continue in the form of tributes. Uh, three persons will come at this time. Uh, Mrs. LaVon Stewart, who was the Ball family class leader. 
And in the Methodist Church, class lead, classes are like small groups, and she is the leader of their small group. Uh, Mr. Carlton Lampkins, who is a family friend, will come following Sister Stewart, and then Brother Jason will come after Mr. Lampkins. Good morning. Miss Deborah Baugh, affectionately known to me as, as Debbie B. Baugh, or Mrs. B, was a beautiful spirit inside and out. I remember when we met, this short, pretty, chocolate young lady with beautiful hair approached me more than 30 years ago about a baby contest that we used to have at Lomax. She encouraged me to, to become involved with my son Rico, who was now part of the Buzz of Promise and the Children's Park. With her, uh, with her children. We developed a relationship. I'm oh, sorry. I'm not used to this, though. I come to find out Miss B was spiritually and physically so involved in many ministries of Lomax Church, supported, while supporting a husband and two children, along with working full time. I admired her. She joined Lomax, in my understanding, between 1980 and 1982 under Reverend Patterson. She was involved in the children's choir, <laughs> the senior choir, Sunday school teacher, later a part of the Lomax Ensemble and Christian Education Director, along with becoming a deaconess. Debbie was very active in her faith. She was a lot of fun, crazy, with unique expressions. She could sing. She had a sweet spirit, but had a way of keeping it real in a nice, nasty way sometimes. <laughs> Debbie didn't hold any cut cards. She always spoke her mind respectfully, but she always managed to voice her opinion, which is what most of us or some of us were thinking during meetings or general conversations, but were um, too intimidated to, to say it. Debbie was a realist and a private woman who loved her man, Tommy, and her babies. She was loving but a stern teacher, the kind that didn't take any stuff. I remember her telling stories to the children and serving pizza, as they said. I remember her telling the kids to sing louder as she walked to the back of the church saying, I can't hear you. <laughs> the kids like some Miss B. I like Miss B. I found out she was one of Miss Vaughn's girls. Miss Vaughn and my mom were friends. Yeah. Debbie had a special relationship with Miss Ruby, so we became friends. Although we didn't talk every day or hang out together, we had healthy discussions about spiritual guidance, parenting, marital advice, our relationships with our now adult children. She was proud of her two babies, Kimmy and Jason. Yeah. I was so grateful that she allowed me to be her class leader because, you know, David didn't take no foolishness. I was a little intimidated at first until I realized or understood that God was having her guide me in a new role of class leader. Debbie and I had honest conversations about my role and her expectations of me. <laughs> I and class 13 will miss her wit and her wisdom. Debbie was honest and loving. She always maintained her dignity and faith in the Lord, regardless of her health circumstances. When I last saw her, she was hooked up to the monsters. I thought she was asleep until she turned to look at me a second as if to say, gone girl, the Lord got this. Amen. Debbie's gone with God's grace and we will see her again. If we each develop a personal relationship with God, he promised everlasting life. Although this human experience sometimes makes us weak, know that her strength and ours rest in the Lord. And I'm sure she's singing to the glory of God and wearing her crown and strutting around. Debbie will be missed, but we have memories to soothe us in Debbie's memory. And as she would tell me, go do you, boo, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. She was called by many different names. Deb, Debbie, Deborah, Deborah, Mommy, Auntie Deb, Sweetie, Mrs. Ball, Sister Ball, my sister. Regardless of what you called her, she always responded with a strong sense of love and that you were somebody and important. I had the pleasure of knowing her as a dear friend, a supportive parent, a spiritual comrade, an advocate for quality education, and most importantly, as a woman who loved her family. Regardless of the situation, she was always thoughtful. She was always the epitome of pleasant with an infectious smile. And we had some great laughs. Sometimes I would stop by the house. She would be the only one home. Where's everybody? Child, please. I say, where's T-Ball? I don't know. Somewhere clothing the naked and feeding the hungry. I say, well, she said, Jesus, Jesus. That's all she would say. And when she thought I was less than optimistic, she would call Carlton, Carlton. Or she would say, Dr. Lampkins, that was out of order. And then she would give me the look. Deb was a very authentic person with a strong faith in God. There was nothing pretentious about her. She had no title, but I contend she was a great tree as defined in the poem by the late Maya Angelou, When Great Trees Fall. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. Lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in forest, small things recoil into silence, their senses eroded beyond fear. When great trees fall, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe briefly. Our eyes briefly see with a hurtful clarity. Our memory suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. Great souls die and our reality bound to them takes leave of us. Our souls depended upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds formed and informed by their radiance fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. And when great souls die, after a period, Peace blooms slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us. They existed, they existed. We can be, be, and be better for what Deb existed.
Good morning. I feel um, right at home being back here. That's a overwhelming feeling today to see all the faces and the, to come back and see uh, really the, my second home really for, for most of my, definitely most of my childhood, but most of my life. So it's a blessing to see everybody that came today and to re-see all of you that I haven't seen in so long. Um, I'll keep this uh, relatively uh, short and, and simple. Uh, they asked me to mention some reflections on my mom and some thoughts on my mom. And um, the first thought that came to me was to, you know, to try to come up with a, a, a you know, an individual, an individual instant, a cute moment, a lot of them here, but all over the place, <laughs> that reminds you of, oh, that, that, that can kind of put your mom you know, your mom's life and the meaning of your mother to you in one moment. And there's just too many. There were, there were just too many, just thousands and thousands over many, many years for my sister and myself of, 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 of positive, beautiful uh, moments looking back on them. But as has been said many times here and will be said many times in time to come as people think back on my mom, uh, uh, the, the, everlasting uh, memory of her and feeling of her is joy and love and to be honest happiness and uh, you know I get compared to my mom our personalities often <laughs> at nauseum most of the time uh, I know I know I'm I'm Deborah Blige and Ball's son through and through most definitely uh, and um, part of that that you see in me um, is hopefully my smile and my joy and, and that approach to life. And that's 100% from her, without a doubt. From very young, you know, she was that person, that funny, and uh, loved to tell stories and, and, and saw the joy in the things that kids here did and I did and my sister did and sometimes my dad, I guess. Some, but. <laughs> He's less funny than the rest of us, but you know, he tries. I loved her very much, of course. I love my father very much. I love my sister very much. Um, I see her uh, through me, unfortunately, and my son Mason, who uh, she loved very much. You know, she, uh, you know, you know how moms are. She'd say, you know, I'd I'd be running around here somewhere, and she said, you know, one day. You know, you're, you're going to have a son, you know, and, and he's going to run around everywhere on you and you're going to be as tired as I am today. And I <laughs> would look at her at eight years old and be like, you, whatever, you're crazy. And now I understand it's all come full circle, 100 uh, percent. Um, I love you, mom. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'll miss you, mom. And um, do um, it's a. I don't know, it's a bit of a, a, a sad day, I guess, or a, a day of reflection is to be fair, but uh, don't, don't, don't be too sad today. You know, wipe, you know, wipe your tears eventually today and, and smile in thinking of my mother because that's how I think she would have most definitely wanted it to be, okay? Amen. Thank you, thank you for welcoming me home. What wonderful, wonderful tributes to a life well lived. At this time, we would invite you to read silently the obituary. That will be followed by a musical selection by Sister Veronica Riley. And then the Reverend Dr. Auntie Monica Hargrove will come and bring the eulogy, um, given her very, very close relationship with the Ba family. So please pray for her as she comes. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Um, Debbie was one of the first people I met coming to Lomax back in the 90s, and she was always so kind. She um, sometimes even treated me like a sister. Um, our children played soccer together, and uh, of course, as a parent, she always kept the other parents in line if they weren't in line with our kids, because uh, our kids used to whip up on them all the time. <laughs> Um, we all know now that Sister Debbie is in that place that God promised for all of us. And just pray with me right now. There's a place in heaven. When the toils of this life is over Where the saints are clothed in white Before the throne Singing praises Forevermore In my Father's house There are mansions bright If he said it Then I that is true oh yes it is there's a place for me beyond the skies brothers and sisters there's one one for you Jesus, he promised me a home over there. Jesus promised me a home over there. Yes, he did. No more sickness. Sorrow, pain, care. He promised me a home over there. Jesus promised me.
glad that Jesus promised us a home over there? Is somebody happy today that Jesus promised us a home over there? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We have all gathered here today to celebrate the life of Deborah Ann Blygenbaugh. We all knew her for different periods of time. We met her in different settings and may have known her a short time or a long time. However, one thing we all have in common is that Debbie Ba impacted each of us uniquely in only a way that Debbie Ba could have impacted us. So we thank God for creating her in his image, for gifting her with the special personality and being that she was for 69 years in this Arlington, Virginia community. We thank God for her and for coming from Boston and from all the other detours she took before she got here. And for allowing us the special privilege of knowing her, loving her, sharing time and space with her, and the blessing of experiencing her unique and authentic love for each of us. I see so many people here that I haven't seen in a long time. And it's good to know that people still gather to celebrate, to celebrate lives well lived, to celebrate people who have impacted us, to celebrate people who love God and God's people. We thank you all for joining in this celebration of Deborah Bod today. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you how I knew Debbie, and then I'm going to move on and give you the word. Amen. Man. I met Debbie many years ago back at Dartmouth College where Tommy and I both had the privilege of meeting each other in college as college kids. Tommy was a couple of years ahead of me. But when I met Tommy, shortly after meeting Tommy, I met Debbie because Debbie and Tommy were a team way back then, way back in the 70s. And they stayed together through thick and thin. And then they relocated to Arlington, Virginia um, before I came here. But my family came here in 76. I think I'm really dating myself. I'm telling you all something. In 79, actually. And uh, I, I reconnected with Tommy and Debbie. And the first thing they told us was, y'all got to get a church. Y'all got to come check out our church. And we were saying, well, we look in, we taking our time. And Debbie said, you don't know till you come to our church. Our church is special. Our church is different. You got to come to our church. So we made a few rounds in the valley, and we found our way to Lomax. And we found out Debbie was right. Debbie was the one that was selling it more than Tommy. I'm not dogging Tommy. But Debbie was the woman of God that was making it real and keeping it real. And so my family came to Lomax because Tommy and Debbie shared their faith and because Debbie kept insisting that this was the place to be. We found love here. We found friendship here. I see a lot of people in the, in, out here today to celebrate Debbie's life who I met way back then. And we thank God for Debbie being a disciple, for spreading the good news of the gospel, for saying my church is special and my church is different. And I thank God today that I was led here because it is here that I have grown and that I have learned to love in an unselfish and in an unlimited way. And I thank God for that. The expression shared by many of you during today's service reflect a variety of reasons that persons grew to know and love Debbie. She was larger than life. She had great and humorous life experiences that she shared with many of us. Somebody can say amen. amen. And she was always full of fun and ready to have a good time, whether it was at a water park in suburban Fairfax County, going down a water slide in an inflatable float and falling off the slide into the water to everyone's surprise. Somebody here remembers that day. Whether it was telling another one of her real life funny stories at a friend's house, often around a kitchen or dining room table, and Debbie was always helpful and encouraging, whether it was leading children's church in the fellowship hall that you've already heard about with all the pizza, 
creating, using creative arts and crafts projects and showing movies depicting the stories of the Bible, or whether it was accepting a phone call request to go over and check on a friend's father or mother, or to share with her, with her that a parent or close loved one had just passed, or it was simply sitting quietly with someone experiencing the impending death of a spouse and gently rubbing his legs and reassuring the other spouse that God would be with her during the days ahead. Or whether it was encouraging a child who was supposed to sing a solo during Sunday service when the children's choir sang who froze when it was time for him to do his part and Debbie just politely coached him along and said, you do it like you did it in choir rehearsal and hugging him afterwards when he did it to the glory of God. That was the Debbie Pa that I knew. Or whether it was helping to organize the Children's Day program or the special graduation day program at Lomax for the recent high school graduates and the middle school graduates and the elementary school graduates, Debbie Bach could be counted on for all of those organizational days. And whether it was just enjoying time alongside her beloved husband, Tommy, and telling her daughter, Kimmy, just how proud she was of her when she accomplished another great thing in life, whether it was high school graduation or college graduation or whatever, Debbie was always proud of Kimmy and always proud of Jason and Boriana and Mason was the apple of her eye. <laughs> I remember when uh, Boriana and Jason got married down on Lake Anna and Debbie was there to enjoy the beautiful weather and celebrate the beginning of their life together. Those were some joyous times. Yes, we all have some special memories of Deborah Blige and Ba, even though some may not remember exactly when you met Debbie. Nevertheless, those who met her, I say, have never forgotten her, for she was a very special lady to each of us. I am grateful to have this opportunity to share a message from God's word with you today as we celebrate together Debbie's life of service and love. You've heard those themes from everybody that's come to the podium. Debbie was a true servant. She lived a life of service and we were all touched by her love. You've heard two scriptures read today during today's service, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. I believe Debbie found great direction for her life from both passages. And I would like to share three verses from the Gospel of John, which was read to you so eloquently earlier. And the three verses that I will share are verses one through three. I believe these offer a special message for each of us as we pause to remember and celebrate Debbie's life. It's a very familiar passage and most of you have heard it. I'm gonna read it from the New Revised Standard Version, the updated edition, which reads as follows. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And please consider with me during this part of the service from the thought, don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for bringing us together as one to celebrate a life well lived, to celebrate one who loved you dearly, to celebrate one who set a good example for all of us starting with her family, for her church family, for her community, and for all that she met. Now, God, I ask that you would let me decrease and let your word increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Jesus wrote the passage that I just read to his disciples as he prepared to leave them. 
He knew that he would be crucified, that he would die, and that he would be resurrected. He wanted to prepare his disciples for the time when these things happen, and he would no longer be here on the earth walking and talking and eating with them. So Jesus shared the words recorded in John's gospel, which we call the believer's gospel that I just read from those first three verses of chapter 14 to tell them that they should not be troubled when these things happen. We've all faced some difficult times in our lives, amen? Amen. Times when we didn't know how to prepare for the next hard thing. Debbie, no doubt, would say to us that she faced some difficult times, like the one that Jesus was preparing his disciples to face. She might say that it was really hard to lose her dad at a very early age. Amen, Brother Tommy? And I know that she was heartbroken when her mom died, for her mom had been her role model and her source of encouragement when things were difficult. Without a doubt, Debbie felt pressed on every side when she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2016. When she began to feel the debilitating effects of that disease and as it lessened her ability to move easily, and you know Debbie liked to move, As she began to lose control of her muscles that made it easy for her to walk and go up and down stairs and get in and out of the car, and as it lessened her ability to make independent decisions about those things she needed, Debbie needed to be assured that her needs would be met, that she had no reason to fear, and that she could continue to live in peace. And I believe the words of this passage gave her the peace she needed to accept the bodily changes that were occurring without worrying about the days ahead. In these three simple verses, Jesus assured his disciples and Debbie and us that there is no reason to be troubled or to be anxious or to worry about things that were sure to happen. The lyrics to one song come to mind when I think of how Debbie reacted to these changes in her life. For you see, Debbie liked to have fun, and she enjoyed music of all genres. Somebody say amen. And so Stevie Wonder put it this way, don't you worry about a thing. Everybody's got a thing, but some don't know how to handle it. Always reaching out in vain, just taking the things not worth having. But don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing, mama, because I'll be standing on the side when you check it out. They say your style of life's a drag and that you must go other places. Just don't you feel too bad when you get fooled by smiling faces. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing, because I'll be standing on the side when you check it out. But the thing about these lyrics is that I believe Stevie was talking about some Mr. Good Stuff who might show up and help a sister out in her time of need. But from the passage in John 14, we know that Jesus had a bigger plan when he said, don't worry about a thing. And in essence, Debbie understood that it wasn't just her husband, Tommy, who would be there for her. And it wasn't just her children, Jason and Kimmy and Boriana and her, even her grandson that would be there for her. But, and it it wasn't just her friends. Debbie understood that she did not need to worry because of these words that Jesus shared with his disciples. Jesus said that because the disciples believed in God and in him, that that belief alone would deliver them and calm and strengthen them during uncertain and troubling times. The disciples knew that Jesus was a healer, 
They knew that when he spoke peace to the raging sea, that the storm ceased. They knew that he taught them things that they never understood before about the kingdom of God. They knew that Jesus loved them and that he was there for them. And they knew that Jesus had a special relationship with the Father God. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Debbie knew that deliverance from troubling situations and changing circumstances come through belief in yeah. Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. She knew that believing in Jesus Christ will deliver you from trouble and that he is the only way to be fully delivered from troubles, heartaches, and pains. Right. Debbie also knew that she couldn't believe in Christ's ability to deliver her one day and then go to somebody else for deliverance the next day. Right. Debbie knew that continuing to believe in Jesus Christ while she was in the midst of any and all of her her troubles would carry her all the way through. Anybody present here understand that kind of belief in our Father? <laughs> Debbie knew that when a sinner believes in Jesus Christ, that sinner has peace with God. She knew that since all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we all have the blessed assurance that God will carry us in our troubling times and that the assurance of God's presence would give her peace. So although Debbie had some good days and she had some bad days, and she had some hills to climb, she continued to believe in Jesus Christ. And she prayed when she became anxious. And she found that her good days outweighed her bad days. And Sister Debbie did not complain. I never heard a complaint from Debbie Ba because she rested in the assurance of God's peace. She knew that God had been good to her, that he had been very good to her, and that all of her good days outweighed her bad days. And I'm going to say it one more time. She did not complain. Debbie knew that when bad times or situations come, we are to be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our re requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Beloved, the Lord does not want us to have troubled hearts, but he wants us to have hearts of peace. Debbie knew that, and Debbie practiced that. That is, she talked to God on a daily basis. She walked with God. She meditated on his word, and she remained in peace. She was content because she knew that God was in control. She had the peace that passes all understanding, and we could see that as she rode gently in the car and was wheeled to visit with Jason, Voriana, and Mason from time to time. And as Tommy prepared her meals and attended her daily needs, and as Barbara came by to help her get dressed or refreshed or to, or to help her with her hair, and as she was determined not to allow her declining health to cause her to miss any of the important celebrations. You know, like Barbara's most recent birthday party, amen? And Tiffy and Monica's engagement party. Was Auntie Deb there? Amen. And most recently, during Kimmy's last day in town with her mom prior to her transition, the opportunity to take a phone call from David as a way of saying, I am entrusting my Kimmy's care to you and God, and I am at peace because I know she will be in good hands. Somebody say, that's a good mama. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In addition, Jesus says in his passage that we have no reason to fear because God already has a preordained plan for each of us. Wow. That plan includes special homes for us wow. where we can live with him forever. Yeah. No more moving from a two-story house to a house all on one floor or a senior citizen's assisted living facility as some of our children have been planning for us. <laughs> <laughs> For the place Jesus has prepared for each of us is permanent. 
it has no need for ongoing updates or repairs. No need to get someone to cut the grass, Brother Tommy, yeah. or have the furnace checked or replace the washer and dryer. Yeah. This new home that Jesus has prepared for each of us is trouble free and comes without the impact of inflationary prices or high interest rates. No need to pay real estate taxes. Somebody say amen. amen. Or replace the roof. But most importantly, Jesus tells us in this passage that he's coming back. Yeah. That he's coming back after he goes to prepare that home for each of us yeah. so that we receive the assurance that he is with us and that we can be with him. I believe when Debbie was resting early on Tuesday morning, April 4th, she was not troubled. She was not worried because she knew that Jesus had already prepared a place for her. I believe she slept peacefully knowing that Jesus was coming soon to personally escort her to her new home. Somebody say amen. She did not want to leave her beloved Tommy, yeah. Jason, Boriana, and Mason, or Kimmy and David, but she knew that Jesus had prepared a new place for her, a place where trouble, heartaches, and pains would all be over. No more sickness, no further need to be lifted or wheelchaired around, no more worrying about her sugar level or her next doctor's appointment, or what she could eat or what she couldn't eat. The day-to-day -day troubles of life all over. For Debbie was eager to claim her new address, her new home on streets paved with gold. Somebody say amen. She remembered that old gospel song that she sang with the senior choir. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. With the troubles of this world, with the troubles of this world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going home to live with God. There'll be no more weeping and wailing. I'm going to meet my mother over there. I'm going to meet my darling mother over there. I'm going home to live with God. There'll be no more dying there. There will be no more dying there. I'm going home to live with God. And without saying a word, without awakening anyone, Debbie went home to live peacefully with God. Amen. Yes, Debbie lived her life and went home to live with God. She left us all behind. And she left us with some things to think about, some lessons about living here and leaving earth in peace and not being troubled. What is it today that your heart is troubled about? Your child or your children, your job, your finances, your marriage, fear of government changes or crime in your neighborhood. In this world, peace is something we hope for. It's something we work for. It's something we advocate for. It's something that we even petition and march for. But to those who know Christ and allow Christ to walk with them and talk with them, peace is God's wonderful gift received by faith in God alone. First of all, because we believe that God is with us and is in control of all that really matters, we receive and live in peace. Second, Jesus says that we have no reason to fear because God has a preordained plan for each of our lives. Yeah. Debbie lived her plan that God yeah. gave her. Yeah. She lived a life of service and of love, not just service at her church, but service in her community, service on her job, service anywhere she went. Debbie showed us how to live that preordained life that God asked her to walk and live. Finally, Jesus' plan for each of us includes that same home. It's not Debbie's home because she's got her home, but he's got a home written with our names on it for each one of us where we can live with him forever. We won't need a realtor to do a search for the right house that meets all of our requirements, nor will we need to make a monetary down payment, qualify for financing or pay real estate taxes to occupy and maintain the property. In fact, the title deed is already there in the name of each person, but 
with one stipulation yeah. that you accepted Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior of your life. I can just see Debbie standing in the doorway of her new home, yelling to all of us who are still here, wow. make sure you get your affairs in order, accept Jesus and come on up here. There's plenty good room in this kingdom. And there is no bad neighborhood up in here, up in here. So get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Down at the cross where he shed his blood. Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. And don't you worry about a thing. In the name of the Father who sent his Son who left us with his Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hey man, at this time, we're going to have the committal. I'm going to invite Pastor Whitaker, if he would come, and if he would join in with us, please, in this part of the service. that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is cut down like a flower. He flees as it were a shadow and never continues in one stay. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for comfort but you, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord, God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, Deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. You know, O Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, most worthily judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from you. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of the world the soul of the departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write from henceforth, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, in whom whosoever believeth shall live, though he or she die. And whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall not die eternally. We meekly beseech thee, therefore, O Father, to raise us from the dead of sin to the life of righteousness. 
that when we shall depart this life, we may rest in him. And at the general resurrection at the last day may be found acceptable in his sight and may receive that blessing which thy well-beloved son shall thou then pronounce over all of them that love and fear thee, saying, Come, ye blessed children of my father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our mediator, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let us all join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will receive our benediction. Uh, we will greet the family, and then we will recess out. And now unto him who was able to keep you from falling, unto him who was able to present you before his throne with amazing grace, to the all-wise God who prepared a place for Sister Debbie and has prepared a place for those of us who know him as our Lord and Savior, to the all-wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.